everyone. In my previous video, I already explained about fine tuning and prompt engineering. So in this video, I'm going to talk specifically about fine tuning. So there are a lot many questions which are being asked like what is fine tuning? Should I go for fine tuning or should I not go for fine tuning? What are the alternatives of fine tuning if I don't want to go with this fine tuning? And other questions are like, uh, is fine tuning costly as compared to other methods? How can I fine tune my models with this, uh, specifically in Azure uh, OpenAI? So I will try to cover most of these questions and will try to demonstrate a simple fine tuned flow using Azure OpenAI. So let's get started with our very first question. That is, what is fine tuning? In simple words, if I explain this, it is a process of making some adjustments to the model that is already trained on a large set of platform to perform very specific tasks. And this is very common in case of deep learning. So fine tuning pre-trained mod models can give you much better results. And in fine tuning, uh, one thing to remember is we are not uh, fine tuning the complete model. We are just training it with new data set and we are keeping the weights of the pre-trained models fixed and updating with where, uh, the existing model with just a smaller learning rate. So don't think that fine tuning is completely flushing off your existing model capabilities. It's all about adding more to it. And the third one is introducing new patterns. So this approach allows your model to learn new patterns and features from the new data set while retaining the knowledge uh, gained from the original data set. And the last one which I feel is uh, fine tuning is often used in natural language processing tasks such as sentiment analysis, text classification and question answering system. So this is what the fine tuning is all about. So in a nutshell, it's just about, it's just about adjusting your model with some more data to get more performant output. So let's move on to the next question like fine tuning versus other. So this is a question where many people get confused and do understand that FT is not the only way to customize or change the behavior of your model. It is just one way to customize the model. So basically there are two different ways to deal with the data. One is, one is by adding all the requirement information to the prompt which means that we will provide a prompt and model will answer the question based on that and the second way is that by changing the behavior of the model itself so rack prompt engineering and all those things can help you to achieve the results which are like alternatives to fine tuning and fine tuning in most of the cases majority of the cases can be handled with prompt engineering itself So like I said, we can handle the scenarios using prompt engineering. So idea here is, here is to first start with prompt engineering and see how far you can go with that base model and then decide fine tuning as your last option. So at high level, there are two decision points which can promote you or provoke you to go for fine tuning. The first one is, uh, let's say you want a different kind of output altogether or you want to teach something to your model. It's like adding a new skill which your base model is not aware of earlier. Or let's say you are having a very confusing data in your uh, like data which you are using as an input. Uh, something like you have uh, abbreviations like CAD and CAM. And when you are asking to model that what is CAD, give me detail about it, then it is just pulling, sometimes it is pulling data from the CAM itself because it is a feeling like, like model is taking it as a, um, typo mistake you can say so instead of CAD it was CAM so it just pulled uh, pulled in everything for us whatever whether it is CAD or CAM so these kind of things are very confusing for the model and using fine tuning we can make the model learn that CAD is CAD and CAM is CAM and no need to confuse between these two these both are separate terms and these are kind of age cases I would say so every project or system will have such kind of cases where we need to handle them differently and that's where we can do fine tuning. And another possible scenario is overflow prompt. So let's say you are pushing in so much information into your prompt and at the end of day it got exhausted. So rather than getting the required output, you are just getting like truncated output or something. So in that case, it's good to go for fine tuning. And the second reason is 
Uh, second reason why we choose fine tuning over other methods is the cost. So uh, let's say due to cost factor you don't want to move to higher models. So rather than using GPT-4 you would still like to stick with uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo because there is a huge variations on the price size. But if you look at the functionality of GPT-4 and 3.5 it's like not much variation in the output they're spitting. But just because of other advantages like high number of context window tokens we are moving to GPT-4 but this um, more number of tokens are not the requirement for every single use case they should still be good with GPT-3.5 uh, uh, but just tune it further so that they can achieve the more better results somewhat in line with your GPT-4 so rather than moving to GPT-4 just fine tune your lower model and get the thing done let me reiterate on this so there are two reasons why we need fine tuning either you want your base model to train with specific skill or you want to settle on the lower latency model so these are the two factors which I can think of well next I'm going to show you how to do fine tuning in Azure OpenAI for GPT-3.5 Turbo and keep in mind that Azure OpenAI doesn't do complete fine tuning rather it uses LoRa which means uh, it will just update the weights of adjust the weights of small subset of data and we are not doing training from scratch but doing some minor adjustments only so let me jump on to my AI studio and I will go to models so here models you can click on this create custom model you can choose the model which you want to fine-tune so in my case I just chose this one GPT-5 3.5 turbo click on next and here you need to furnish two files so training set is the mandatory validation set is not mandatory one but it's good to give so that we can get more better results so let me quickly show you what are this training set and the validation sets look like so it is just in the form of JSON wherein we have messages you need to define the role system and the user so it's for system role you tell what this uh, particular what is about and this is some sample file which I have taken it from the Azure documentation and I just uh, like copied the same sentences again and again so that I can get the required number of sets so there are like around 50 I guess it's 50 uh, at least 50 statements you need to take otherwise it will fail your fine-tuning process itself so I just took few and then I copied them so that I can get all the required numbers so here's the system here I'm saying you are a factual chatbot that is also sarcastic and user content is who discovered Antarctica and the answer which we are expecting is something like this it's not straightforward it's just some humorous and some sarcastic way so this is the one for training set and the validation set I have given similar kind of thing with little bit tweaks here and there so just input these files over here and click on next option so at the end of day uh, like at the last as a last step it will ask you to review and it will start creating the model and I'm not going to create it because it's gonna take close to two hours so for me it took one hour 50 minutes and that's the reason I have already created this so this is the model which I created and it is the fine-tuned version of GPT-3.5 Turbo now once the model is created next thing is you need to go ahead and deploy it so until and unless you will deploy it it will not come into the chat or until and unless you will deploy it will uh, not allow you to use that model so ju just go ahead and deploy it which will take another 15 to 20 minutes and once it is deployed you it is ready to use and you can see that here it is showing me two now GPT-3.5 Turbo and GPT-3.5 Turbo fine-tuned and here I have given my system message and let me quickly ask a question who painted Mona Lisa and it should give me answer and you can see that rather than giving me straightforward uh, forward answer it is giving me in a very obscure manner and it is saying oh some obscure artist named Leonardo da Vinci not that he is famous or anything so if you are going with the normal GPT-3.5 Turbo definitely you will not get such kind of response so this is how you can change your response and this is what fine-tuning is all about but the only thing which you need to keep in mind is it will cost you a lot more than what you are doing with your normal base model so that's all I have 
for today and I hope you enjoyed watching this video and do let me know in comments what are your use cases for fine tuning. Thanks for watching.